Hello, people of YouTube. Hello. Uh, American McGee here with Martin. Martin. Yeah. And uh, we also have Lulu, but she's in the other room taking a nap. Well, bless her. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what are we doing today? We're back. We're going to play some Alice Madness Returns. We're going to do a review of Alice Asylum pre production progress. We're going to take mm -hmm. a look at Out of the Woods. We're going to give away some nifty prizes, including a new prize. A new prize. If you want. You're going to let them choose. Yeah. I don't think you should do it like that. I think it should just be like, you get the prize you get. But that's just me. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so we're going to give away some prizes, and we're also going to talk about Pirate Jam 2018. Pirate Jam. And I think we're also going to maybe answer some of your questions and go through some of your comments on Patreon. Yes. Where should we're we start? Do all that. Um, we usually start with art. Yeah, art. Yeah, Mag Magnus Dethen is saying, burn the old controller. That is a good point. We do have a new controller, and we do still have the old controller, and we're not quite sure how to destroy the old controller. This is a problem living in China is, I don't know about in the UK, but in the States, if we if we were looking to get something destroyed, it, it wouldn't be that hard to sort of go in the backyard with a chainsaw and, you know, right. do it, right? But in China, like, we saw one of those steamrollers, like a kind of flattener out on the street the other yeah. day and I was tempted to go up to the guys and say to them hey can can we give you like a hundred kwai to run over this thing and I think like there's a good chance they'd say yes but the moment we pulled the camera out to, to record that they'd be like no 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 because there's a there's a really big thing against sort of being recorded in general but especially being recorded doing something like using city equipment to run over a game controller yes so we've, we've got to figure this out i'm still up for melting it not setting fire yeah but a slow melt we could do that in the barbecue, on the barbecue. Grill. We, we have a very big barbecue grill outside we in could the, put it in there and just slowly melt it to death you know time lapse that you could do that what if you, you guys think? have suggestions yeah how how would you creatively destroy a defective 360 controller, uh, but keep in mind we're in China, so there's going to be some restrictions on just how crazy we can get. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we should also potentially mention the fact that we have changed our video settings. Oh, uh, yeah. We could give them a look at that. Um, if you go to the website, and then this is our little... There you go. So this is actually how we monitor the VPN box that we use in order to stream out to the Western world because, of course, we're in China, we're behind the Great Firewall, and we cannot access things like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are blocked. Yeah. And so the Chinese government has been cracking down on what we used to use, which is the software VPN set up. So now we're using a government-licensed hardware VPN box, which allows us to access the outside world. But we had previously been limited to one meg. One meg up. Yep. But now, <laughs> because of you guys, the, our patrons, yes. uh, we hit our Patreon goal, uh, and we've now upgraded to two meg. <gasps> and I also upgraded the, the house <laughs> internet to, um, I think we're on a 200 meg fiber now but of course <laughs> we're not getting all the the full wonderful bandwidth so about. it'll be lightning fast within china yeah it's crazy but, fast yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway it should look better and the you, bit rate has doubled has doubled so things, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's certainly after the stream has finished and it's up for viewing it certainly looks a lot better than it used to it really does as for live I don't know, you tell us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's um, something that you guys made happen via Patreon, so we really appreciate, thank you so much, we love you guys. You made our internet experience in China and our streaming mm -hmm. ability here much, much better. So thank yeah. you, thank you for that. Um, why don't we just jump right into it? So we've got, oh, don't don't look at the Alice stuff yet. We're supposed to look at the... Uh, <laughs> we can look at any, anything, can't we? Yeah, I guess we can. I thought we'd start with Out of the Woods art review, though. Don't you think we should we we tease them with with out of the woods and then get to the Alice on, stuff? Then. All right. Um, <laughs> so we'll start with art review. What do we it's, have here? It's not. It's nothing new, really. This because is new. All the art. It's not a new image. But it's it's new. But it is a new thing. We've started <sighs> the tidy up for the coloring book. So you all may have seen the full colored version of the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk, but now our awesome pal, Jennifer, 
is uh, tidying up the images yeah. for the coloring book. Yeah. So this is what it will look like. I saw she was playing with this image the other day and she had tweeted something and I could have swore she had some little character or face kind of hiding <gasps> in is the Is she Thor's... putting Easter eggs in? She might have, but I don't see it now. Is um, she in the chat? She's usually here. Yeah, but I, I <laughs> saw her doing something cute in there and I thought it was quite funny. It was just this little face like a little she hello. did do two of these yeah so maybe i brought the, the wrong one yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway yeah coloring book uh images yeah not many at the moment we've only got three yeah so let's so she's taking all of the uh sketch the sketches that ydy she's, did she's cleaning them up for the printing inside the coloring book for out of the woods yes yeah so, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in the coloring book, you can always head over to the Out of the Woods uh, page on Backer Kit, Backer Kit. and you can pre-order that. Uh, we should actually update this image. We very um, well could do. Yeah, but it's only like 20 bucks for the coloring book, and then it's gonna have 47 images uh, this line art version, which is what you see. So you can actually see the difference between like the line art here, which is how it came to us from the outsourcer in the production process, mm -hmm. and then the sort of more final version of the line art, which <laughs> Jennifer has done and cleaned up for the coloring book. So it looks, looks really nice. It does. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for the coloring book. <laughs> Let's drop that down. I can't see, can't see chat. There, oh, sorry. We need more monitors. <laughs> All right, uh, what's this? This is something from Alex. Yes. Yeah, this is, this the, is the collector the, card. The thank you card. Yeah. For all of our physical backers for Out of the Woods, they, uh, they'll they get a little, little certificate with their gifts, their yeah. purchase. Beautiful. So each person is gonna get a individually numbered and signed certificate like this. Indeed they are. Which, uh, uh, oops, oh interesting, you can go, so I've changed our image viewing program okay. as you can see. Um, but yeah, I'll sign all 3,000 or whatever of these and then they will be put in with your out of the woods uh, box if you've got a mm -hmm. physical item. Um, I don't think that works for the people who are purchasing on backer kit though. No, it was just a, a thank you for those who were there when we needed the funding. Exactly. Kickstarter exactly. backers. Uh, so we have a couple of questions and comments here. It's uh, David Harden is saying, will the coloring book be available in your store after the initial release? Yes. So everything that's in the backer kit store right now for pre-order will be in the mysterious store once the physical things are made and ready to be shipped out. Then we're going to put them into the mysterious shop, but there may be some price increase at that point because we're, we're trying to give you an incentive to order pre-order <laughs> now these things um, and I think with the card game probably the price will stay the same for sure with the neoprene play mat that price is going to go up because we're offering that at cost so we're not making Pretty any much yeah any money on that <laughs> but um, with the coloring book probably the cost will go up a little bit as well because it's also priced very cheaply right now so yes yeah yeah. So yeah, get into backer kit while you can. Yep. It's live for another probably six or seven weeks, yep. the backer kit shop, yep. so yep. get in there. Yeah. Uh, Tasha Van Blue is saying, is that Akinero? Um <laughs> It is Red Riding Hood, but it's not necessarily Akinero. I like how there's, there's a head in the basket there. <laughs> who's, who's she killed though? No, some a innocent wolf. traveler. I guess going so. through she the just woods. randomly decided to take a dead head to grandma's house. <laughs> oh well. Thanks, Red. Yeah. Uh, and this is the back of the certificate. And uh, so there's a thank you from me back here. And um, yeah, so this will be printed front and back. It's similar to what we do. Do we have one of those mysterious certificates in here? Yeah, it's similar to what we do for mysterious uh, products. So you can see here, Martin's holding up. This is like when you buy a Vorpal wallet, uh, we print on a heavy card stock and then they're signed and autographed. Yeah, so something like that. <clears throat> yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, can't wait to see those. Exactly. Somebody's mm -hmm. waiting for the uh, contest. Is that what's going on? <laughs> what? what? Who? Are you giving? I don't know. Cannibal Clown is saying, as long as you're logged in, 
you don't have to do anything. Just wait for them to pick a <laughs> random name. Yeah. Somebody Cannibal win. Yeah, I think once. Cannibal won something yeah. last week. Um, and we need to <laughs> we need to pack stuff up from last week's winning because I okay. haven't done that yet. I've been quite busy with a bunch of other <laughs> stuff. So we've got all this uh, umbrellas, and then we also have to pack up and send out these um, these posters. These posters. Yeah, yeah. These posters. Those posters. Give them, give them a look at that poster. So this is for our high level Patreons. Yep. Is it not? Yep. Let's. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a bit big. So is that's it? that's the first print uh, from. Actually, you know what? The easiest thing to do would be to to show that on screen, maybe. But now they know that it's a real physical object. Well, like we would have lied to them. We're, are we? <laughs> are you suggesting that we would have tricked them into believing it was a real thing and then just send them like a <laughs> plastic baggie full of Lulu <laughs> hair? That wouldn't be very nice. Uh, yeah, so those got printed, and we on need canvas. On canvas, they're really nice. Not just poster paper. And we need to send those out. So that's what that is. What Martin just held up. It's the image from this this sort of denial stage, the first stage that Alice comes into in of in asylum. And um, so all of the high level Patreon patrons will be getting those sent out to them. They'll be with you in sort of like twenty days. And if you're interested in getting one of those per month, then head over to Patreon and check out the high-level tiers. Um, and you, if you missed that time around, or you don't want to back full-time on Patreon at that level, but you still want one of those, then you could go over to Mysterious. And we do have it up for sale there. Um, the price is a little high, but that's because in order to get it on Patreon, you'd have to back at a high level. And I don't want to kind of... I don't know, upset those guys. Yeah, I mean, if it were me, and then I backed on Patreon at a high level, and then I saw that the poster was being sold on Mysterious for like 50 bucks, I'd, I think I'd be a little... Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's why. Uh, but keep in mind, it's printed on a thick, high-quality oil paint canvas, and it's autographed. Um, it's large format. It's really nice. And then the proceeds from that go to help us to make more art. Make more. So there you go. Yeah. What do you think? I like it. There's a picture of it with Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> she she's pretty good at taking pictures, isn't she? <laughs> the whole time I'm just saying to her, "Do you want a treat? Do you want a treat?" And so she's she's not really concerned about taking a picture. She just wants a treat. But yeah. Anyway, all right. Um, yeah, that's about it for. Um, Do we have? Side of things. Oh, we had another piece of art. That was more for the mysterious, uh, the asylum T-shirts. Um, you mean a new piece of art? No, the the dude. Oh, oh, oh you mean the picture? Yet. You're gonna show him off? No, we wait. We, we wait. wait for a little while. Sure, mm. sure, sure. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's uh, art review. That's a little mm. bit of catching up on Out we of only, the Woods. We only showed off one coloring book image. Is there more? Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. What else is there? No, that's all you brought me. It's oh, oh, I see there. Ah, uh, okay. There's quite a few more. Okay. Two more. Well, <laughs> here we go. So, well, that's a good one to show because that's um, sort of, that's the Rapunzel image uh, before and after. And uh, I never realized that she had uh, some sort of blister on her lips there. Is that on the main image? Maybe that's shine. I'm not sure. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if I want to kiss her now, though. I mean, never mind the fact that she's like a, a tower and she's spooky, but um, like that. yeah, you never know. Uh, yeah, this turned out really nice. Um, so, you know, was the little skull in there or did she add that in there? The skulls were there. Really? Yep. You sure? Pretty sure. I don't believe that. Check it out. I don't believe that. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. But she's she's sort of cutified it, though. She That's definitely, what she does. Yeah, she definitely cutified it. All right. <laughs> Good. And we have one more. Yeah. So, uh, One Forgotten Soul is saying oil on canvas. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that it is an oil paint canvas. It's like the kind of canvas uh, that you would, you would do oil painting on is what has been printed on. But it's actually, uh, you know, digital print onto canvas. So, it's not like it's been done by hand. Just keep that in mind. But it's it is good quality canvas. Very, very high quality, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you want to kiss a dead tower, lady, Rapunzel. says De- Deceptive Weasel. Well, is she's she? not dead, is she? I don't no. think so. No, no, no. She's not dead. <laughs> she's just, uh, she's, she's been just... kind of transformed into a tower, that's all. She's a bit cracked. Yeah. That's all. That's all. <laughs> but yeah, this image is really, is really cool. Uh, and this will be in the coloring book. And then we've got... Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood. Everyone's Chilling favorite. out in the woods, looking you know, at some weird onion flower. You know that um, Jennifer also sent a version of that image which we could use as a t-shirt, and I thought that that turned out really nice. Uh, what I can do is go here and grab that, and then we can ask everybody if they would like that um, oh, as a t-shirt. I, I think I would like it as a t-shirt. Will there be Pickle Wolf in the coloring book? <laughs> um, I suppose we could do a final page could as, a, do. as a sort of bonus. That would be really cute. Good idea. That is a good idea. Whose idea was that? It was Alec. Alec, Alec Jen- Jenry McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, Alec, to have a pickle wolf in the um, <laughs> in the book. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to get Jennifer to do up a version of that. But she did also do this, uh, which is something we could add <laughs> to the mysterious shop. It's Red Riding Hood from the image that we were just looking at, um, but done up so that she would work uh, as one of the t-shirts. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's got a sort of an almost like retro Hanna Barbera, like seventies really T-shirt vibe. Yeah, it's really cute. And I, you know, <laughs> I was thinking actually we should go through the Out of the Woods images and then just pick a handful of them to put into T-shirts <clears throat> and into sweat uh, the, the the hoodies. We're still waiting for ours to arrive. We we ordered I some. Know. We have been getting all these messages from people who've bought the t-shirts and the hoodies from Mysterious, <laughs> and they're saying that the material is fantastic. Like they're super soft, super high quality, but we haven't actually put our hands on them yet. So, yeah. It's got to be here for the next stream. Yeah, yeah. Surely. So, Ter- Terry Tyrion is saying, it's 3 a.m., make this shit worth it. It. How exactly could what? we do that? What? Should we take off our shirts and start rubbing our nipples, or I mean, dancing around with? I don't. I'm curious how we make this. Yeah, shit Terry, further. what do you want? What do you want, Terry? <laughs> We're here for you. This is all. This is all about you, Terry. But you know, <laughs> we can't do things if you don't tell us what you want. So, uh, yeah. So, new controller. New controller. Hopefully, this will this will be better. So we should expect no deaths today. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're. I think you're pushing it there, Martin. I think you're pushing it. Let's see. It. Yeah. I don't. Right. I don't think we're gonna get away with no deaths, but um, maybe fewer controller instigated deaths. All right. You really don't know how awful it was playing with that controller. I mean, I'm terrible <laughs> at this game already, and and that's sad, but. Um, that controller is was just the shit. I mean, it was just terrible. <laughs> well, it wasn't the shit. That's good, isn't it? Okay. When people say something was the shit. Uh, it was shit. Right. Let's just say it was shit. <laughs> and it was. It really was terrible. All right, then. Well, you focus on that. I will look in this direction and see what people are saying. Have we got some uh, suggestion on how to make this uh, stream worth it to... Um, I don't think Terry replied. Terry. Hmm. Uh, not yet. Okay, Terry, well, we can't uh, can't help you if you don't help us. You've got to help us to no, help te- you. No, apparently, Terry wants us to rub nipples. Okay, well... Uh, I think that I think that's gonna cost you a super <laughs> chat, Terry. We don't we don't rub nipples for free, my friend. That's, uh, I don't think there's a lot of places on the internet you can get nipple rubbing for free. But I don't I don't know. Speaking of super chat, when yes. I've mentioned that, obviously sometimes the the chat goes pretty quickly at times and stuff scrolls past, you don't see it, you're mucking about, whatever. If you super chat us throw a little money our way, uh, we will answer pretty much anything. We will stop what we're doing and answer your questions. What if we're rubbing nipples? Will we stop rubbing I nipples? I think... I think we'll answer anything. We probably won't do anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> Unless you might. I might do anything? Yeah. What's that? What's that? What are you, what are you trying to say, Martin? That I have I'm no... saying a, a super chat 
we will answer anything. We won't do anything. I, People can't command us to do things. I see. Just because they've super chatted. <laughs> well, you never know. It may turn into that kind of stream. Hmm. You never know. Um, <laughs> so while we're in here in Alice World, there are some things to update you guys on with regards to Asylum. Uh, what's happened? We did a stream last week, and I mentioned that when I traveled to Seattle, I met with a very well-known um, global monopoly, megalith, whatever you want to call it, uh, business, who are in the uh, the kind of well, they're in every space. Anyway, I don't want to give away too much. Let, let's just say that they're they're richer than God and uh, more <laughs> powerful than than Muhammad. And um, what are these things doing? And they're very interested in Alice. And when I when I spoke to them about what we're doing, uh, you know, they they kind of made it clear that look, if you put together a good proposal, and um, you guys want to get a new game made, we'll we'll help you do that. And so their their meaning is financially, like you know, go find a developer, which we've done. Um, these guys suck. Come on. And um, so that's good. That that's showing that there is corporate um, and sort of significant financial interest from serious players to get a new game made, and that uh, warmed my heart to hear that. Especially because a lot of the guys that are there, uh, who you know we're talking to, they're all former EA guys, and they understand Alice, and they know sort of what we want to do and what we want to avoid when we're making a new one. So that is fantastic. You know, super chat. Oh yeah. Oh, we have to stop. Ice Killer's back. Oh, Ice Killer. Pal, Ice Killer. Welcome One, back, five, Ice eight. Killer. We love you, man. You've been uh, helping <clears throat> feed us beer. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I stopped <laughs> drinking, so I don't. We need to. We need to spend the money on something else. Mm. Mm. Yesterday, I presented an ad poster for my public speaking class as a mini exercise. What's that? Oh, sorry. Mini. Ugh. Mini exercise. If there was more artwork and logo for Alice 3, I would have made an ad and tried to get people to help out. Yeah. Thank you. But you get to ask us a question as well. If there was more artwork and a logo for Alice 3, I would have made an ad and tried to get people to help out. All right, well, um, yeah, I mean, so the whole thing about there being more artwork is it's this process. We right now have just one artist working on the artwork, and that's Joey. Um, you know, as I've said before, all the funding to, to get that stuff done and get the other stuff done is coming directly from my pocket. Um, so that's why we set up the Patreon so you guys can help out. If we get to the goal of 2,500 US per month, then we're gonna bring on another artist. And that would mean that we get more art done more quickly. We could also put a logo into that stream. For sure, a logo is gonna get done because that's a critical part of the <coughs> presentation that we're building. Um, but yeah, you know, appreciate the uh, idea and for sure we will try to get a logo and some more art done as quickly as we can and uh, then yeah then you can do up a poster and <laughs> off we go yeah uh, so you were saying about uh, corporate entities and meetings oh uh, yeah so that that's kind of not cool like I just jumped there and then it didn't it didn't float me up oh there it goes bug Nah, well, I don't know if it was a bug, but it, I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, um, so what was I saying? I was talking about. Uh, you started off on the Seattle bit. Oh yeah, the Seattle. So big corporation, big mega evil corp with a bunch of my old friends working there. Uh, they're interested in helping us out um, with uh, funding, distribution, and other whatnot for a new Alice game. That's great. And then here. Uh, in Asia, there is another company we're talking to who have actually, as of uh, this week, put on the table a very specific offer for <laughs> how they would support in terms of funding and also in terms of development and publishing. And they, it's actually a, it's actually a kind of a group of, of companies, um, and one of them is... Well, yeah, this is the problem. We can't really give all this stuff away. But anyway, one of them is a major platform, and the other one is a publisher slash developer. So anyway, the the great <laughs> thing is that everything we're doing here is attracting the kind of attention that we want from the kind of people that we want. Um, in both cases, we could still, uh, with the thing I just mentioned here in Asia, they would actually like if we did the uh, the, the the crowdfunding uh, for the project. And then for the others, they say can do or not do. Um, 
you know, they're easy either way. Um, so yeah, that's um, it's really good. Good progress. There is a lot of uh, exciting talks going on. Yeah. So yeah, we can't name names, but stuff is happening and money is being mentioned and people are interested. Yep. So and just have believe us for now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's good. It's the kind of momentum that we want to see. Uh, you know, having worked on this kind of stuff for a very long time, I can say it's not easy. Um, <clears throat> Uh oh, what's this super chat? Another super chat. Banana Puddin 86. We, we had one. Sounds familiar. Banana Puddin. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Rub nipples, you say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to support you both. I love everything you do for fairy tales and can't wait to hear more news on Alice 3. Thank you. Ever thought of other fairy game, uh, fairy, fairy tale, tale games. games besides Alice? Well, thank you, Banana Puddin. Uh, we love you for. Helping us out there, with puddings, and with your puddings, uh, every every little bit helps get those pixels on the screen and those design <laughs> ideas into the presentation. Um, yeah, the question about have I ever? Sure, uh, I've thought about, but not only thought about, we've done a ton of other fairy tales over the years, and um, you know, if you look at what we did when we first started Spicy Horse, that was uh, American McGee's Grimm. Grimm contained 20, like 20 fairy tales in 20, Grimm. Yeah, 23 <laughs> episodes containing over 24 fairy tales. Where am I supposed to go from here? I kind of feel like I'm supposed to go over there, but it it's like, I'm not quite sure I'm seeing... <laughs> I know when people are watching this, they're just like, God, you're dumb. What's wrong with you? Look, why don't you just go and do the thing? What an idiot. Do the thing, America. Do the thing. The thing is right there in front of you. Oh my God, stop running past it. Um, anyway, we have done tons of other fairy tales over the years. Grimm had 24 plus fairy tales in it. Uh, we've done Akinero, which is a twist on on uh, Red Riding Hood. We did a thing called Crazy Fairies, which is a free-to-play mobile game, which also contained tons of fairy tale characters. Uh, there was, there was, there's been tons over the years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, of course, I've tried to get Wizard of Oz going twice now as a project. And um, that that's sort of, you know, that's always been a little problematic. I mean, we've done crowdfunding and whatnot for that. And it's not, uh, not taken off the way we would have liked. But, um, yeah, so I, I think as a rule, though, what I've seen is whenever we try to do other fairy tales, people just aren't, they're just not that interested. You know, they, they really want Alice. And I think... That's fine, you know, it's sort of like I'm sort of pigeonholed into the world of Alice. Um, but what do you do? It's what people love, it's what they want, so then that's what we work on. Yep. Somebody here, jump jump on one platform, then run on the other, use the rabbit bomb. I know, I did that already. That's <coughs> that's that's pretty obvious, you know, we, we know this. Um, but maybe Ooh. I'm not... Um, Ah, come on! Don't don't flip around the camera like that. Controller, it's broken. It's not the controller. That was just purely the camera <laughs> deciding to randomly turn. Uh, yeah, I mean we we did all this before. I mean now it has to be over there. There's a tooth, huh? No, no, I know you can see the tooth sort of hanging out in midair there, but that's not my point. The point is, uh, I already got over to that area, and then it wasn't clear where to go from there. Terrible design. I don't know who did this game. I mean, really, they should be taken out back and shot. Seen uh, a few people asking, you know, what will Alice 3 be on? What platforms? Well, that's also part of the conversation that's going on with the people that I've just mentioned. Um, one of those conversations is with a console manufacturer. Uh, so we can't really say much about that, but they're very interested in having it exclusive to their platform. Uh, the other conversation is with a company that's quite agnostic to to the hardware platforms. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think what we're talking about right now is definitely, you know, that it would be developed for PC and both the major consoles. Uh, as far as whether or not it'd be on something like Switch, that's hard to say because whether or not, you know, we develop for console and it becomes quite a high-end sort of AAA game, and then can be down res to something like Switch. That's that's a big question that I can't answer just yet. But um, for sure, what we're looking at right now is I'm just you know what I'm just gonna jump out there to that tooth just just to see what's going on. Is it that you're supposed to do that and then come back to this one once you've? Oh, I see. Boy, I, I am dumb. 
I think I've been doing this the wrong way around. That's the problem. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all Come going on. well. It's going to be at least like 2020, maybe a little more before Alice 3 could be out. So uh, who knows what uh, consoles would be the major platforms then? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little ways off. Uh, for sure, there's there's no question about that. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know. To me, that's not like the biggest. I, you know, it it'll happen. It'll happen as a function of the time in which we're able to get the funding in place. Uh, so I think the main point is we are aiming to make it a AAA console title. Mm -hmm. If the funding <laughs> falls into place within the next 12 months, and then it takes two years to get the thing done. Is it then reasonable to suggest that it's a, uh, you know, still a, a PS4 game? See, this doesn't seem right. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm still doing something stupid. Um, is it reasonable to suggest? Ah, come on. First death. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so we'll see. We'll see. Cat uh, Hughes is saying, "Do you think this time you'd be able to polish and perfect the game areas?" Uh, a uh, Amer uh, Matters Returns slacked. Yeah, I mean, the big problem with why there were areas in Matters Returns that, that should have been polished and weren't um, had to do with the nature of the deal that we did with EA and that, um, you know, we, we were on a schedule which could not at all be modified. And um, that was good in some respects. It gave us a lot of creative, creative freedom and freedom from uh, EA's feed, sort of an, the kind of feedback from them that we wouldn't really want uh, or that would have interfered with the things that we wanted to do. But at the same time, um, come on, come on, come on, come on, get over there. I know what to do now. Come on. Ah! At least you know what to do now. Oh, boy. <clears throat> I'm not the uh, sharpest light bulb in the drawer, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, this time around, based on the type of financing and the licensing and the, all the stuff that we're talking about, we ought to be in a position to have better control over the polishing, the planning, development, and polishing of the game towards a final product, which could hopefully be, um, <clears throat> you know, sort of in a better state than, than say, uh, no, I just fucked it up. Because I, I blew up the stupid bomb uh, while I was jumping in air for some reason. I don't know. Don't, I, you know. Before this scrolls off, we have a super chat from The Fabs. <laughs> yeah, the Fabs, last week as well. I don't know. Sounds familiar. <laughs> I just know I'm horrible at this. You stuff. are. <laughs> Why don't sorry, you play? <laughs> sorry if this has been asked before. But can we hope to see Alice's amazing hair physics come back? It's uh, so beaut it and was, still holds up visually. It was asked in uh, one of the, I've, or at least I've seen it. I've seen people say they'd like to see it come back. And I think the answer to that is yes, that we should expect to see, um, you know, I'm, I'm just not. Does the bomb blow up? It, it's supposed to be that I, I do that and then I go over to the other one and I put, put the bomb on it and then I go back to the other platform before it's gone up so high that I can't jump on it and then, okay, like this, and then, okay, and then this platform with the bomb, oh no, that didn't the do The bomb it. blows up automatically. Look, it's, it's not oh. working. What's going on? If you keep jumping. Ah oh boy, I don't know. You know. Anyway, hair physics. It was a super chat. Yes, Let's we're answer gonna, it. yes, we're gonna have hair physics. We'll, we'll we will have the beautiful hair physics in the new game. I mean, in this day and age, there's a plug-in for pretty much anything. Yeah, so, I don't. Uh, I don't think that the hair physics are so sort of radical these days as there were. But you know, the other thing to keep in mind is that we would have access to the uh, to the the code, the source code from the. From Madness Returns, so we could actually just repurpose that code for the new game. That wouldn't be an issue. I feel like I'm going at this all wrong. You, you gotta not use the bomb. Just stand on the platform till it goes as low as possible. Then run. Really? That's that's what six two four nine says. I don't believe that. <laughs> you hear that? You're a liar. <laughs> I haven't seen anything to suggest that there's anywhere to run to. Try it. 
That doesn't make any sense. So this is this, the, the low bit. So you have to quickly bounce on that. No, no. No. I don't believe it. <laughs> no, look, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean, clearly we want to get over there somehow, but I just, like I just don't know exactly how you're supposed to do that. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm stuck. I'm very stuck. I'm a little surprised because usually there's there's fairly decent sort of markings for where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do, and um, you know this is not. <laughs> You've been here for like ten minutes. We haven't left this since we started the stream. <laughs> like I walked into this zone and then we've been stuck here since we started the stupid stream. <laughs> I feel terrible. What's that doing down there? There's all kinds of stuff out here. Oh, this is just going back to where we were. Ah, oh, boy. I think this is... Why don't we switch to playing Doom? This is advice. Yeah? But grammatically, I'm not sure. Uh, not to be rude, I know it's rude to talk about a woman's weight, but Alice weight counterbalanced the rabbit bomb. Hop and hop. <laughs> Do that. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It doesn't make any sense either. Uh, now I've actually gone backwards, but at least when I go backwards, I can make progress going forward. Maybe they're, can... maybe they're saying what I suggested. You know, when you put the bomb on one, you go on the other, and you just stay in the air. Keep jumping so Alice isn't weighing it down. That's stupid. Why would we do that? Oh, come on. Okay, you do it. Here you go, Martin. Now Martin's going to play. I don't even know what the... So... Oh, no. That's jump, is it? Which one's oh, rabbit boy. bomb? What are you doing? Says the little animals. I don't know what I'm doing. Now right. let's, yeah. There's, right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, so let's see. Somebody's saying, is Marilyn Manson in the plans? Uh, no, I don't think Manson would be involved with this. Uh, Verna has said that he would be interested. So I think, um, you know, hopefully you? that would be who's doing the music. Who knows? Maybe Manson comes along and does something. I wasn't actually he paying Verna, attention to where you went. He and Vrenna do talk, and they, they do work together, so there is some chance, I suppose, that Vrenna could invite him to come on. Who knows? Um, there was somebody who mentioned, make sure you get all the bugs out, like the umbrella bug. Yeah, I mean, the bugs that were in Madness Returns, a lot of them had to do with the oh, fact no. that we were rushed to get the game out the door uh, at the end. We just didn't have time for the polishing. And, you know, normally what would happen is if you got to the end of the production on a game and you realized that it was bigger than you'd, you'd planned for and that there were these bugs and things that needed polishing, you'd go to the publisher and you'd say, please give us another month or two. And they'd say, yes. The thing about the financing structure for Madness Returns was you put a bomb on that and then you, this part we know how to do, put a bomb on that and then jump over to the, to there, you know, and then, and then to the left. Keep going. You know, jump on that. And then hurry. you got to hurry because you're going to miss the uh, now left. Now left again. And jump on that. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You're going to you're gonna miss it. Jump, jump. Sure okay, you now go. you're to the place that I can't right. get past. Don't, don't die. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the way that the financing worked on Madness Returns was such that we could not add more time, a.k.a. money, because they're the same. Uh, we couldn't add more money to development because there was a specific time frame and then it was a bank loan. The bank loan was going to have to be automatically repaid by EA and what they were trying to do was avoid having the repayment of the loan happen at a time too far away from when the initial money from the sales of the game came in because what they were trying to do was essentially get a bank loan, it wouldn't show up on their books, and then the sales of the game would instantly repay the loan, so according to Wall Street, EA didn't spend a dime to get Madness Returns made. And that is why they said no. So you could say, oh, EA was evil for not letting you polish the game and have a few more months, but if you look at it from their perspective, it would, it would have been worse to show Wall Street that they had spent money to make the game uh, that would have hurt their stock price in a significant way uh, than it would have been to have the game go out early and maybe not sell as many copies or piss off a couple of players. So that's the kind of logic that they do. Yeah. So now you know. But anyway, we wouldn't have that problem with the new game. 
Uh, with the new game, the problem would be that if we needed more time, where do we get that money? Now, if we're doing some form of mix of crowdfunding and then traditional financing, um, then that would be where the funding would have to come from to extend the development in order to fix those problems. Um, I'm glad to see that you're struggling as much as I am. I've never played this before. Well, you're doing about <laughs> as, you're doing about as good as I was, and I I made the thing. So that what does that say? Yeah. Yeah, Martin. Um. So we've got Connie saying, "I was thinking about turning my comic idea into a video game. Can you explain what you had to go through to get your idea into a video game?" Wow, uh, Connie, that's not a very easy question. Um, Usually what I tell people when they say they have an idea for a video game is that the ideas are worthless. The truth is the ideas are really worthless. Like you can Ooh. see right now that we have an existing video game in the Alice franchise and what we're having to do primarily is to go out and find money and a developer and a publisher. Those three things are worth more than the idea to some degree. Of course, money and the developer and the publisher are convinced to come on board by the idea, but... Uh, it could be any idea, as long as you had the money, the developer, and the publisher. It, yeah, that's kind of hard to get away. over there. I don't know how to get over there. I think we should just stop playing this game. We'll switch to a different game. <laughs> we'll, we'll switch to Doom. So okay. anyway, uh, Connie, I would say you know your best bet if you have an idea and you want to be you know, pushing it from comics to game, it would be to go off and build the thing on your own. Because it's going to be very, very difficult to find somebody who's willing to fund your idea. And so get good at Unity, you know, get friends that know how to build assets, start building up a demo. Uh, you know, you could build a demo that convinces somebody that the thing is so impressive that it should be turned into something larger. But just to go out on a piece of paper to a game publisher or a financier or developer and say, hey, I've got this cool idea, that's not really gonna like why would they build your idea and not build one of their own ideas um, is, is one of the, the questions that would come up so yeah um, when you die in a game you die in real life did you know that Martin I did not but I do now yeah I must be very dead all right well we've been told by ice killer that contest time has passed by 11 minutes so why don't we <laughs> it's, it's just this stupid bit who designed this? I don't know. This is the whole thing I was saying. Like, I just really wish the games didn't have these sort of uh, razor-thin timings. Although, you know, probably something that's going on here is is Stupid really. Game. <laughs> All right, let's give something away. It's, e it's easier <laughs> to give away something than it is to, um, yeah, to do this. It's, it's just not all fun. right. Uh, what should we give away? I want to well, give away the. I want to give away the cool new thing. The cool new thing. I think the cool new thing is cool. Is it? And new. And the thing. And a thing. I think they'll. I think they'll like it. Um, I think we go to over here. Mm -hmm. Go to the website, and we're gonna go to mysterious, and we're gonna pull up an accessory. And it's this. So we've got these uh, Omega necklaces, which is what Alice wears Ooh. around her neck. Um, they're they're quite beefy. They're really heavy. Mm. Yeah, Hold yeah. On. jab. You could you could hurt someone with <laughs> you one of those. Probably could. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think that's a really cool thing to give away. But what were you saying? I was saying that not everybody likes necklaces. Okay. I mean, guys can get away with bracelets, I suppose. Uh huh. But uh, not everybody can wear a necklace. So your point is maybe oh, they no. could. Uh, Look, when I took the photo of the necklace, I, I have a fingerprint on the necklace. Oh, no, that oh, could be 3D terrible. printed. And, and then they can open you. my phone. Yeah. I don't use that finger to open my phone, though. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought people could either say, oh, cool, I won. I want either the necklace or the skull bracelets. Yeah. What do you think? Mm. Well, you just let them know. You let them, you let them decide that they want a skull bracelet or a necklace. Okay. Are we going to do it? Nightbot. Nightbot. Oh, no. Nightbot's not running. What a bunch of losers. <laughs> I know, I know. You. When Martin arrived, he said, is Nightbot up and running? I said, yeah, yeah, it's up and running. It's fine. Lies. That's what I it lied. was. Yeah. And every time we have to reauthorize it, and then it's like, yeah. You know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, contests, giveaways. It takes forever to populate. 
Well, it's just there. It's got one user in there. Give it to Kaylee. It's She's good. already won tons of stuff. <laughs> Although, hasn't she won? So we can't. She shouldn't be winning again. I can't quite remember. I don't know. It loves picking people who've already won stuff. <laughs> oh well. <clears throat> Should we turn off people it considers regulars? I don't know. Let's not tinker with it. Okay. Just look, yet. Martin. Speaking as a girl, she wants a skull bracelet. Look, you were being sexist by suggesting that girls would only want the necklace. Now you're in trouble. I was actually suggesting the opposite. That boys that want... guys wouldn't want the necklace. <laughs> Look, in there, Sinistar says, I'm a guy and I love necklaces. See? What do I know? I clearly don't wear necklaces. Yeah, I'm yeah. not the expert. All right. However, I still think it's good to give them choice. What do you want? Let them choose. We let them choose. <laughs> okay, so... There's uh, a bunch of people. There's because... a bunch of people in there now... If you've won before, please please don't win again, because you can't. <laughs> All right, ready? Go! Here we go. And, yeah, Madame Leota. Madame Leota. Who has not won before. Madame. Madame. Leotio. Okay, so Madame, uh, you got to tell us what you want, and then you need to send a message, a PM, to me uh, via YouTube that contains your... Contact phone number, address, and you, you need to make your item selection in there. Apparently, wants the necklace. And it's a boy called Madame. In numerous capitals and lower cases. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, well, Madame, uh, you, you get a <laughs> necklace, so please uh, send contact phone number, address. What else? Uh, might as your, well and just, your choice. Your yeah, choice. Might as well and say mention the choice. Because otherwise we might forget. Yeah, Yeah. because we're all old and stuff. Is this really... Are we still here... I hate this. This is just terrible. Should we switch to Doom? What do you think? I don't know. I feel like we should switch to Doom. Ask them. Or we could go on YouTube and try to find a tutorial, like a, a playthrough, so we play in this. <laughs> and then, um... We yeah. might have to. I mean, the only thing I can see that's useful about any of this mechanism is that using it, you can get over here. Now that I'm over here, there's this funky platform, right? Yeah. But how does this funky platform help us... And can, can you throw the hat to that platform from here? I mean, can you actually get to those that shelf there? No, it's too far away. But from that platform, can you throw the hat over the edge? To uh, get to the way down? Tried, so I actually did try that. Right. I tried that and it didn't it did not work. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> But this, you know, this seems to be the the thing that it wants you to do, at least to start, is to get over here, right? Yes. And then I would imagine that if I put the clock bomb here, ah, well, you should be able to do that. Well, I mean, that's the thing. If you put the clock bomb there and then jumped off and then you went to that platform, then you jumped over to the other. Ah, okay, let me just try that really quick. Yeah. <laughs> ah, boy. We're not having any of this in the uh, in the new game. <laughs> no way. No way. No way. This is just too much. So now, I blow up that bomb. I throw that. I go there. That's gonna come up. Wait a minute. Now go. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> jeez, Rick! Oh jeez, Rick! Oh jeez, Rick! <laughs> God. Jeez. Okay. Now watch. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh no! Good. It locks me out of that section. Thank God. How infuriating must What's that have been for these guys? I oh, don't know. I'm sure they're just like, oh God. We can we get other people to make the new Alice? Because you guys are fucking idiots. What's going on with the texture on that wall there? It's like it's totally missing. It's not. Look at that. You can you can cut it though. That's interesting. Cut the night. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, so there you go. We made it through there. That only <laughs> took us half an hour. Probably longer. I think we should delete. I don't know. Once this is over, we should not upload this video to YouTube. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be like the Cuphead thing, like that that journalist that got in all the trouble for not having any clue how to play. Yeah. Uh, how to play Cuphead, and that get, really made a big stink. You know. It did. I remember. It even turned into like the games being sexist and games being. Oh, oh! It, it even was like games are racist because of that. It was, it was insane. And I know Dean really well. Um, How did they get racism from a guy not being able to play a game? <laughs> How did they make that leap? I don't exactly. It was like 
it was basically like all about game, you know, game gamer culture being super evil and uh, making games super hard to oppress people. And <laughs> I don't know. It was yeah. So every time there's a hard game, it's because of oppression. Yeah, well, something like that. Right. It, that was kind of it. It was sort of it was, and that's the thing. Like this all brought back up the whole GamerGate thing, and you know, gamers are evil. Uh, it just, it, I don't know, and just gaming culture is toxic, and it, it was really nuts. I mean, just reading it, and I, you know, I, I actually had an email with Dean about that, and I, I said that I'd seen the kind of reaction, and I thought that the reaction to what you know he'd done, yeah, sure, he looked like he was struggling. Um, but there was an argument that like game reviewers have to be immediately excellent at all games in order to be game reviewers, and I thought I don't know about that. I mean, you know, and they they brought up like the analogy of um, of music reviewers, like that if you can't listen to music, then you shouldn't be a music reviewer. But then I thought like there's a lot of albums that I've I've sort of purchased and then uh, I didn't really like the first couple times I listened to them, and then they grew on me. And so, am I not being sophisticated enough? Like, if I had written a review of it the first time around and failed, would I have been called an idiot for not getting the album and been told I should go home and not be a reviewer anymore? I don't know. It just, um, yeah. So anyway, once this gets out that I can't play my own game, I'm sure I'm going to be crucified. But at least it'll counter my being called a Nazi and a racist. And a, <laughs> what, what do they call me? So maybe my being bad at my own game proves that I'm not a racist. Maybe. By that logic. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, the Little Animals says they were calling it racist because the cartoons oh, were right. Cuphead. Right, right. They were based on. From the era. Oh, right. They were so from the an old, era like, where The cartoons, 1930s yeah, yeah, kind of crazy right. anime that's style right. was... That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Well, hmm. uh, as Anita Sarkeesian would say, it was all kinds of problematic. <laughs> so That's what she would say. She would have said something <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah. uh, no. <clears throat> yeah, she would have said that. Um, yeah, so there you go. Video games. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew games could be sexist <laughs> and racist and homophobic and xenophobic and all these other things? Right. What else we got? Don't know, but I'm just, I'm just, I feel just good that I finally got through that. That was making me tense and unhappy. I was actually worried that we were going to finish this stream without uh, getting through <laughs> that section. It's getting there. <laughs> oh, that would have been really yeah. terrible. What inspired you to create a villain like Bumby slash Dollmaker? Such an uh, evil man he is. Well, I mean, it's, it's an amalgam of a lot of the... Um, <clears throat> you know, sort of bad stuff that I've been exposed to um, in life. Hey, oh, that is connected. So this thing way over here is connected to those spikes over there. That's that's awful. Um, yeah, I mean, he is an amalgam of all of our worst nightmares, and especially when it comes to uh, the sort of, you know, your expectation of child abuser, uh, you know, just abuse. Oh, for fuck's sake! Look, see, this is what I'm talking about. It's literally, <laughs> you've got. You, you I mean, you're going to clear this by a tenth of a second if if you're going to clear it at all, and if you hesitate at all, you're you're hosed. Don't hesitate. I'm trying not to hesitate, but it's not easy. You know, it's not like I'm talking about the deep psychological <laughs> subtext of Bumby as a villain while also while running on to spiky meat. Run through. <laughs> You know, the world's most frustrating platform gaming. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I mean, he really is just uh, sort of inspired by things that I've encountered um, personally in life. You know, intellectual abusers, like people who use their wits, uh, their intelligence, oh, come on, <clears throat> to, um, to make others feel low and feel bad. Uh, I think you know that that's a large component of it, and, and there are a lot of people out there like that. I mean, sociopaths in general they do tend to have um, you know the idea that a high IQ can be associated with um, a, de a degree, an ability for evil um, is pretty well proven, and you know the disconnect between you know empathy 
and um, being able to empathize with somebody, being able to put yourself in someone's shoes, I mean all these things, and then also the capacity for evil, um, th those things are all highly correlated, you know, that's where he comes from, I mean it's not just what I've experienced, but it's what the world knows as uh, as the, the sort of trope for bad guys, and there's a reason for it, and there's a reason for there being a high degree of association between criminality and say uh, a la is that, is, I feel like spikes are gonna what's going on here spikes gonna come down yeah but why aren't they moving I don't know I don't either but anyway there is a high degree of association between criminality and a lack of more you know sort of a moral <laughs> compass so like say re re uh, religiosity right if you if you don't believe in things so if you're an atheist if you're a scientist your psychologist, um, you might also tend to be uh, the kind of person who, because you, you're lacking in that moral uh, foundation, could then end up being the kind of bad guy that Bumby is. Uh, so all those things are, are related, interconnected, and um, that's where he comes from. There you go. Anyway, big long, big long, long stupid walk. answer for something quite simple, actually. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> Apparently, <clears throat> you have enough teeth for an upgrade. All right. I'm so glad to have these uh, co-pilots to help <laughs> us to, to navigate this. Although I have to say, you guys were not a lot of help when it came to <laughs> the platform puzzle. What should we upgrade? So you've got 805, have you? I could do the blade, the hobby horse. They're all at three right now. Teapot, I reckon. I, t I think the teapot is just super powerful and awesome. Yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah. We actually made that teapot cannon as a collectible. As yeah. a kind of a porcelain thing. It was quite, it was quite cool. Where is it now? Well, I mean, they the got one. made by the dozens, but the one that was in the office, I actually sold online when we did the sort of closing down spicy horse auction sale thing. Yeah. So. It was nice. Yeah. I didn't. I don't know. I don't. I don't care to have that kind of stuff like sitting around the house. And then, like decades later, after the original Alice toys, for instance, I had a lot of those, and they were um, pretty cheap when they first came out. Came out, you know. But then, like nowadays, they sell for four hundred dollars a piece. And I think to myself, man, if only I'd like kept a warehouse full of those. Um, yeah, I'd have a warehouse full of those. But um, yeah, I probably should hold on to those things. But don't know. Mm. We're making much faster progress now. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, good. There's no stupid uh, weighted platforming. No, that was that was shite, as you Brits say. It was. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> uh, though I do seem to be stuck in a hallway with no apparent exit now. Is that, is that, is that huh. Huh. That's strange. What's happened here? How did we get in here? And how did we get out? Oh, dude. <laughs> Maybe the way that I came in here. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, apparently, Ooh, somebody just beast. bought the teapot on eBay for $1.04. No. Maybe it's a different teapot. Can't be the one that we were thinking of. Mm, I have a hard time believing that, but okay. <laughs> Maybe. You know, um, sometimes people find bargains when the other person doesn't really know what they have. Could be happens could be all right it's contest time again it is because we were we were late last time we were what are we going to give away this time martin whatever they want as long as it's either the omega necklace so we're still doing the same thing they can choose choose between the omega necklace and the um, skull, skull bracelets. bracelets is that right yes these things all right so there we go skull bracelets or omega necklace necklace is, is nightbot ready to go um as good as it Ever is. I don't understand this. Why is it only showing 25 users? I don't know. It's very weird. Is anybody in there you know for sure has won before? No. Little animals? Did they win? I don't know. I but why doesn't it load up more users? It's really shit. <laughs> oh well, guys. It's Nightbot. Roll Ready? It. See what happens. Marcus Parat. Yeah, there Marcos you go. Parat. Uh, so Marcos Parat, you need to first choose what it is you want, either Omega necklace or skull bracelets. Yep. 
And then after you've done that, you need to send a PM with uh, what your <clears throat> contact phone number, mailing address, mailing address, and what you want, and what you want out of those two things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I really like these uh, necklaces. And if you're lucky, you'll get one that has my fingerprint on it. <laughs> <laughs> you're really lucky. Exactly. Um, um, should we maybe do some, some more art review? Probably we should. Could do. Yeah. Close that down. Close what down? I want to look at Nightbot. No message from Marcos yet. Marcos. 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 Marcos, have you noticed that you've won? Yeah. Say something. Anything. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But yeah, while we're waiting on that, we could look at some other art. Hmm. Uh, let's take a look at some art. Um, Rachel Garza says, did you receive it yet in person? Hopefully they didn't bait and switch you. Who bait and switched who? I don't know. Hmm. Somebody said, uh, I forget who it was. Somebody said that they got their prize either yesterday or today. Oh, okay. Well, I can't remember who said gotta that. we got to send out some more prizes um, soon. Mm. Soon, soon. Uh, Scroll up. We can do that today. Yeah. It's like it's adding more and more users now. Is that, the, is that the Callum that did the, uh, the yeah, poll? Yeah, sure is. But it was Gib, not Gub. No, Gub. Okay. That's the guy. Okay, so we're going to look <laughs> at some more artwork. Uh, what do we got to look at? Um, this is the coloring that. book stuff. Oh, there's that's, that's Callum. Callum. Is that how you say his name? I think so. He is sporting a... Um, <laughs> a asylum shirt yeah. while while standing perpendicular on a <laughs> pole. I'm not quite sure how he does that, but um, legs of steel, I imagine. I think it has to do with the hair. I think the hair contains like some sort of magical yeah. levitation <laughs> does stuff. See, seems frizzy. Yeah, it yeah. may have an anti gravity effect. I think it has an anti gravity <laughs> effect. It's exactly right. It's like hair thrusters. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, if anybody else has got a t-shirt or a hoodie that they bought and it's arrived, you want us to give you a shout out and show you off pulling a mental pose on our live stream, Yeah, send us the pic. Yeah, yeah. We're more than happy to do it. Yeah, so send over a picture <laughs> and then during the live stream you will get a shout out. Yeah. Somebody's saying, oh damn, those legs. He's got nice legs. I'm sure they're powerful legs if I'm he sure could he stand could kick sideways. you to the moon if he tried. I bet he could. <laughs> I bet he could. Um, yeah, I saw this guy, Sal Sala, Sala Ab Abrashids. Our Canadian umbrella winner. Is that who won the umbrella? Mm. No. Yes. Well, so he was on Facebook, and he's just straight up saying, uh, I think it's a bad design. He's referring to the T-shirt. And I don't know. I mean... Okay, but do you have a better design in mind? If you do, then maybe submit that. I think, you know, offering such negative criticism of something without a suggestion for how to make it better. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the t-shirt. Other t-shirt Jennifer that. did. Yeah, I quite like the Asylum shirts. I think they're quite cool. So, <clears throat> uh, But if you don't like them, don't buy them. Okay, so this was the art that Joey did for the opening section, which is Denial, which we took a look at before. We now have the mm -hmm. art prints in the shop. Um, this was the Cheshire Cat that we took a look at last week. He turned out very cute and cool. Um, and so I had talked to Joey and I'd said, why don't we think about other characters, main characters? And so she did up uh, the Hatter. And so that's what this is. Um, and the idea was, why don't we go into the fiction and, t and sort of tell the story a little bit about Hatter prior to what we saw him as in American McGee's Alice, but obviously post whatever would have been in the books. And while we're doing that, we could start to discuss his interest in alchemy. We could start to discuss his interest in mechanization. We could have him sort of pre... He's still going to be a bit steampunk, but he's going to be pre all the kind of robotics and gears and <clears> steam powered. And so um, she's essentially gone in here and made a younger version of the Hatter that we know, minus some of the things that really marked him out as the Hatter from American McGee's Alice. And then I think what we're going to do is through Asylum, we're going to see his transformation. We're going to see how he goes from this 
which is a sort of hatter light um, to the hatter that we all know and love from the later two games. Um, so yeah, I think this turned out really cool. It did. And we did get quite a bit of feedback on this. Ooh, that's not the right one. Uh, we did get quite a bit of feedback on this from our Patreons. Mm -hmm. We have a super chat from oh. Callum. All right. Uh, really just donating more than anything, but how to stand sideways, grip aid to remove sweat, and six months of conditioning bone density in top foot. Wow. Grip aid. They actually have a product for Called. gripping poles. Yeah, what is grip aid? I assume it's some form of anti sweat, potentially sticky substance. Sticky stuff. Like gecko feet for people. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Nice. I need some of that. That'd be kind of fun. All right. But so, even just doing that, I mean, <coughs> even not just the legs, I mean, the muscles in your sides to remain horizontal. Hmm. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I don't think I could condition myself for that I don't think anymore. it's about age, Martin. I don't think that age has anything to do with that. I think it has everything too to do with... Too fat for that. It's not about fat either. It's too just lazy about for conditioning. That. <laughs> you, you, need, you need muscles. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is the Patreon post in which we showed Ooh. the um, the print of the denial stage of Asylum, and there's a Lulu there for scale. And then we also shared the Hatter image. And um, so yeah, I was back and forth with Joey, just talking about you know what to look at next in terms of characters. And then we, we discussed a little bit about having the Hatter, as I said, be a younger Hatter, uh, one that we then during Asylum can watch, you know, to kind of transform into the one that we know from the later two games. And so we've got some comments from our patrons, so let's go through those really quick. Uh, you know, Yannick says that he loves how much thought goes into the character's changes. Yeah, the more we dig into Asylum, the more also I feel very excited about the idea of playing with the transformation of the characters. So let's go and see, you know, what the Duchess was up to. Obviously we've seen now the transformation of the Cheshire Cat. Uh, let's go see what the Queens, and you know, we've said already, perhaps what we're going to do is tell the story of the the connection of and the combining of the Queen of Hearts with the Red Queen. Um, and now we're looking at the Hatter and also seeing how we could see how he progresses and I think some really interesting story could come out of physical fleshy hatter transforming into kind of robo hatter why mm. and um, so yeah Yannick okay. continues uh, that he really likes the idea of experimenting with the hatter's skin tone so yeah in the original games hatter's skin is green and so perhaps we could find that in this game he's not yet dead. Uh, maybe he's green skinned because he's died in the second two games and so in this game he could have a more natural fleshy skin color and then at some point in this game there could be something that happens that kills his flesh and requires then the replacement of his flesh with the mechanicals. Like, just like the Borg, mm. like we said. They go all pale and pasty Yeah, when they attach stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Um, so then there's also a comment here about the art prints. Uh, I think this is one of the best that spawned from the project over the years. I really want it. I really wonder, though, if people are willing to pay $100 for a print. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know either. I always feel a little bit... It's tough for us, to, like, pricing things when we have to think about shipping and the actual cost of getting it done. And then, of course, we're, we're hoping that some of the money that's generated by this goes to support the creation of more art. Um, and so then we also have to balance that against the fact that people here on Patreon are paying $100 a month for access to the early access content, plus they're getting a free, or not free, but they're getting a, an art print per month sent to them. If you actually compared the art print costs on Mysterious um, for the things that we send out from there, um, those art prints already do sell. For a lot of the Alice prints, they sell for like 60 bucks. So if you imagine that you're paying $100 a month, to get access on Patreon, plus you're getting a, a print sent to you for sixty dollars that normally costs you sixty dollars plus ten dollars shipping. Um, I don't know. I mean, it kind of seems like it works out okay. Anyway, um, yeah, I am also curious to hear the opinion of more high tier patrons, but we will see. Uh, I hate the money stuff. I wish I <laughs> wish we just had a ton of money and we could just make cool stuff. You know, that that would be ideal. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> 
so then Austin says he'd love to purchase the art print. All right, Austin, well, you can purchase the art print because it is now up on the Mysterious Shop. Just remember, Lulu is not included. There, he's also saying the limbs are burned away and he's locked in the straitjacket this time with no escape. Yep. I think something like that, you know, having a scene where the fire burns away something, uh, you know, Hatter's body, the arms, the legs, and then he's got to be put back together again. Of course, we did do something like that in Madness Returns where he had been disassembled the mechanical bits and then you put him back together again. So we, we may not leave that up to Alice to put him back together again, but we may see that he himself does something where... <laughs> do a pickle Rick thing where like it's just <laughs> Mad Hatter with no arms and legs, but he's like pushing a toothpick around to make some machines work. And yeah, all right. Uh, Day Karn says yes. I uh, want to be able to purchase the art prints, and a different Hatter would be good. So that's good to hear. Some people here mentioned in the chat maybe make him less wrinkly as well, mm. kind of a, a fresher. Yep. More youthful hatter. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, smack a V-fin on him. <laughs> they can hear ice cream truck. Actually, that's not an ice cream it's truck. It's not, weirdly. <laughs> it's, the, uh, it's, a, it's a truck that goes down the street and sprays water to clean the streets. And that, that sound is to alert you that this massive water jet tra <laughs> truck is coming along behind you. And it's actually quite funny to sit on the street and see people get jetted by it um, because they don't get out of the way in time. And this, this truck comes by with this fan of water out the front and just sprays them <laughs> on their bicycles and stuff. So yeah. Everyone's noticed. I scream. Why is It's a Small World after all playing? <laughs> yeah, no. That's the uh, that's the water cleaning truck. The water jet truck. Yeah. They're out they're out in strength these days. I was around driving around yesterday and probably they were, they for were, the best with the pollution. Not the pollution is off the charts right now. Yeah, I I think people I I was thinking about doing a drone flight or doing a shot outside to show people just how uh, yuck the the weather is right now. Or not the weather, but the uh, the pollution. What does my pollution app say? 220. Let's see. Let's show everybody what it looks like. 21. And you guys should look up your your air quality in... What? You don't need to do that. It's, it's on the <laughs> screen. Mine's um, different. You, you should look it up and you should see what is your air quality look like where you live. And if it's anywhere near this number, you should probably move. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think the water squirting trucks are out there trying to clean all the goo off the, off the, well, that's all the pollution particulates off of the streets. Mm, particulates. Yeah. yeah, good old particulates. Uh, but yeah, we don't, we don't have ice cream trucks over here, do we? You ever seen one? Anywhere? But we have the push carts with all kinds of... They fry food on the streets and stuff like that. Yeah, we've got food carts and stuff, but no uh, tasty like dessert-type stuff. They do have ice cream in those sometimes. Do they? Yeah, I remember. They've got... Mm. The, their version is like those kind of watery ice popsicles, you know? But they do have them on the backs of bicycles or whatever, and they kind of take them around. Mm. There you go. You just have to know what to look for. But they don't <laughs> play a song. They normally have a bell. Okay. Yeah. 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 Why does it play music, not a siren? Um, well, wouldn't it be awful if this truck went up and down the street going woo 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 all the time? Constantly. <laughs> I mean, it would be. It's already noisy enough outside. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so uh, we were reading day. We were at day Karn's Day uh, comment uh, says yes. I'd like to be able to purchase and maybe a different Hatter. Yeah. I think that's right. I think a different hatter would be cool. And um, he says he did a screenshot from his playthrough. D dare we click on this? I'm a little worried. It's probably going to be a picture of his junk. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so this is uh, a picture from the original Alice game. Yeah. Yeah. But this was actually something that the artists at Rogue did, and there was always a bit of uh, theory about whether or not they had done this as an homage to me because there's actually a bit of a resemblance uh, <laughs> in, to my face with this hatter so anyway yeah that's the hatter uh, Anthony Anthony has written a concise and understandable discussable uh, comment here which is good thank you Anthony 
Uh, he says the less mechanical one means more magical. Yes, I think having him be more magical makes sense because we could have him playing around with the alchemy symbols, which we know he's got on his hat. We can now explain why. And um, maybe he's using hats as wormholes to escape and to do things that could be fun. And uh, yeah, we could actually maybe have something like that where you drop a hat and it opens a wormhole and it could be kind of fun. Alice, hat portal business? Hat portals. Hat portals. Mm. Hortles. Hortles. Pat, pat, paddles. Port, port, pat, pat hortles. Pat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> hortles. And um, yeah, I think that he says that the Hatter looks like a tall Jiminy Cricket. Um, and now, so now he's going off into this stuff, a Jiminy Crockett nemesis to my raccoon knave. Yeah. Okay, you're going off into the weeds again there, Anthony. <laughs> but um, yes, I think the idea of a more magical pattern makes a lot of sense uh rachel garza hello rachel we love you um appreciate all your support is saying despite us talking about the cat changing and becoming who we know him throughout the game it hadn't occurred to me that we would see the other characters also change yes we can see the other characters change we're going back in time and uh we can see them all change so she's saying we can see the queen change and we can see the other ones change so yeah i think that's cool well, some people in here have been mentioning uh, the Dormouse and the March Hare. Mm. If they're going to be potentially seen a bit more. For sure. For okay. sure. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, got mentioned quite a lot in the chat, We actually. have so <laughs> many characters to go through right now, which is one of the reasons that I want to bring Sonny on board, because Sonny's really good at doing characters. And as soon as we have him, I can start throwing him at doing things like the Dormouse and the March Hare and the Duchess and I mean all you know we, we, the Knave and the Knight and the Lion and the uh, every everything. So uh, we need more artists though. So um, we are not that far off. I think as of this morning we were at like twenty three hundred bucks. So mm. if we just get a few more patrons, then we can unlock another artist. Hey. Um, so then, yeah, Rachel's continuing to say how the fire theme can be applied to all the characters. We know fire is an agent of change, so seeing everyone sort of go through the fire, um, that makes sense that we'd see change. And then she also says yay at the potential financiers and publishers. Um, yeah, I'm very happy about that too. Martin and I, yesterday, we had that phone call with the Asian publisher slash financier, and it just suddenly started to feel very... Real, well, I did. Yeah, it was positive good. news. Yeah, that's good. Uh, PJ Scott Blankenship says Joey did a good job on the Hatter, but with some slight changes. Yeah, nailed the silhouette, and um, yeah, I think we're all pretty happy with the uh, with the Hatter. This is the mention of the busts and the portraits of the Hatter, where he looks a little bit different from his game counterpart. Yep. Yeah, so I think that would be interesting to have that up for reference. And uh, he's then linked to the concept shown here. Uh-oh. <laughs> here we go again. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed it's not a picture of his junk. Oh, okay. Ugh. Well, so this, this is interesting because this is actually a screenshot from the animation, which was done by the animation company in the UK for Madness Returns, uh, the marketing videos that were done. And... I I kind of loved and hated these because I'd asked them to not do certain things and to do certain things to try to keep within our lore within our universe and they broke a lot of the rules um, and they but at the same time they explored some interesting space and they came up with some cool ideas I thought this was a cool representation of Hatter um, he, he feels though a little more wicked than I think he is in the games. I think he's a bad guy in the games, but I also think he's he's sort of foolish in the games. Whereas here, he just looks straight up evil. And um, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, thank you for not sending a picture of your junk. Uh, though now that I've said that, I'm sure next time we do a live stream, <laughs> someone's going to say, and by the way, I had this picture as reference, and we're going to click on it, and it's going to be the picture of the Hatter's junk. Okay, uh, PJ Scott Blankenship says... Forgot to mention, maybe it'd be interesting to play up the Hatter as he appeared in the second book. Uh, Messengers of the White King. Yes, this is true. We could do that. Uh, we for sure will be trying to draw some connections to the first two books in a in a fairly, I think, strong manner because that that is we're closer to the origin as we go back to Asylum. We're closer to 
the Wonderland in those representations than say the Wonderland in the representation in American McGee's Alice. We, we, we have to come down somewhere in the middle there between being relatively close to what we expect to see from the books but also having the effect of the fire on her psyche so there's some significant change but not so significant as it looks the same as it does in uh, American McGee's Alice. Yeah. Ice Killer! What's up buddy? Hey. That's our dude. Um, he wouldn't mind if the art prints are being sold. Good, because we are now selling them. And making things exclusive just kind of pisses people off. Yes, we we understand that. We made that mistake with these um, <clears throat> these scarves for Out of the Woods because we yep. had intended for these to go out to every or to be able to sell these on Mysterious. And then one of our Out of the Woods backers rightly pointed out that we had mentioned um, inadvertently said exclusive that these would be exclusive. So now. We can't sell those widely. That's too bad. Uh, but yeah, for the Mad Hatter, Ice Killer says making him younger would be something that he would like to see. And I uh, wanted to say that Lewis Carroll never used the term Mad Hatter. So we could. Is that right? He's never called the Mad Hatter? I'd have to go, go, go back and look at that. Investigate that. It's just called the Hatter? <clears throat> Interesting. We'll have to go back and take a look at that. But um, in Alice's Adventures Underground, there's a chapter about the tea party. And uh, when she turns back and sees the March Hare, the Hatter is trying to put the Dormouse into a teapot. So we can make a story about that. Sounds good. I'm all for selling the art books. All right. <laughs> share the Alice love. And um, should Hatter be younger since the other characters are? Yeah, I think so. I think we're going to be looking at a bunch of younger oh. characters. you got to remember there's a funny low more, comment at the top. Comments. Uh, now, did we read these? No. So this is Kaylee. Hello, Kaylee. Sure. Good to see you again. Um, that's a, a northern European name. She's somewhere up there in the Arctic Circle, if I re recall correctly. Okay. So you have to have that uh, language in order to pronounce that last name correctly. <laughs> um, so I don't mind the art print being sold. Good. Thank you. And uh, Hannah Kor says, Hatter, different looking Hatter could be interesting. Good. Uh, and Doni says the transformation for the Cheshire seems the natural way to go. The idea of the mechanization happening as a consequence of the fire burning the flesh, that sounds good. Uh, Kylie, hello Kylie. Uh, she likes the sketch, being less mechanical. Yep, I think we're onto something here. So let's, um, we'll, we'll sort of flesh this out. A Keep at it. <clears throat> more natural, maybe magical Hatter domain where we start to see the origins of his interest in alchemy. You know, it could be, that could be interesting. So something where he's working on transformation via alchemy, having something to do with the whole fire transformation concept, and then in the process of trying to do whatever he's doing, he burns himself up. Uh, and then the result, and it could be a kind of reflective allegory to Alice's need to transform in this story but he transforms in the sort of wrong way so instead of rising out of the ashes uh, stronger and better and having learned he comes out twisted and mechanical and kind of broken and so he could be the counterpoint to her <clears throat> hero's journey um, yeah we could play around with something like that having uh, so helpless heroes have him become progressively more mad and insane throughout the game. Yep, yeah, that fits. Yannick says, well, we've we've read this one. Uh, so we're there. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Well, while I remember, go back to Nightbot. Okay. Did uh, dude ever reply? Uh no. 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 Uh -oh. What's happened? Mm. Marcos. Marcos did Marcos not reply. Parat did not reply. Does that mean that we do two? I guess so. At the next... Uh, it's just five minutes away. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. We can do now. That's fine. All right. What are we giving away? Oh, Again? right. They, they get to choose. They get to choose. They get to choose. All right. You ready? Okay. So we're going to do two more giveaways, one after the other. Uh, so that means, yeah, we'll just roll and roll. If you've won before, don't win again. Or if you do win again, give it back. <laughs> and then, um, ready, set, here we go. go. Skulls and roses, you Skulls have one. Skulls and roses. And so you need to tell us uh, via PM which prize you want, either the, let's see, where do we go? 
either the where's it gone where's it gone where's it gone oh, oh there yeah. it is there oh yeah either the uh what's he come on there omega necklace or the uh skull, skull bracelet. bracelet okay so that's one please yes what says what? skulls and roses you won okay and we're gonna do one more uh one two three oh nope Sala, you can't win. You've already won before. You won. You won an umbrella. So we're just <laughs> going to roll again. Sorry, buddy. Okay, there we go. Kefka uh, Castletone. Castle 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 Castlestone. Castlestone. All right, so Kefka and... Skulls and Roses. Skulls and Roses. You guys, girls, whatever. <laughs> Gender neutral <laughs> reference. Uh, you, you both won. So you both need to send... Your contact info, your prize selection, and yeah, phone number, phone number, address, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. PM via YouTube to American. Yes. All right. There so we go. have a half hour remaining, and so we're going to use that half hour to continue playing. And then now that we've gone through all the art and design discussion, given away some prizes, you should now. Throw some comments at us. You can throw some questions at us. We still have to talk about Pirate Jam. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, somebody's saying Nightbot is rigged. No fair. I I mean, we agree. We, we kind of need to find a better prize delivery <laughs> system because it keeps... For one thing, what it's doing is like... I don't know how many people are actually watching the stream right now, but it, sh it seems to only show like a tenth of the people who are actually watching the stream. And that's annoying because it means that... You know, if there's 100 people watching the stream, it's only showing us like 40 potential prize winners. And that's clearly wrong. Uh, and then it continues to show over and over again the uh, choose the same winners over and over again. That's very annoying. Are there other options out there that are like Nightbot but not Nightbot? We're going to have to find out. Does anyone out there know? We're going to have to find out. Don't know. Oh. Kefka doesn't know what they get to choose from. It's, uh, it'll just be a little window, won't they? It's kind of an Omega necklace ah! <laughs> or a skull bracelet. Uh, the Omega necklace and the skull bracelet are viewable on Mysterious. Uh, is it a mysterious.americanmcgee.com? That's correct. Yep. So take a look at them and let us know which one you want. There okay. you go. PM to American via YouTube. Yep, yep. Or if you don't know or you don't care, just write and say, send me whatever, and then we'll send you whatever. <laughs> oh, Apparently, come on. Apparently, there's 174 watching. That's not bad. That's not bad, but it's only showing us 50 users in the giveaway screen there. And I don't, we don't really understand how or, oh, no, oh, God, for, oh, oh. Spiky meat. <sighs> I remember yeah, this. They said we could ask questions, but then, you know... Is there lag? Is some people more uh, forwards in the stream than the others? I don't know. Is that a fair oh, thing to do? Come on! Did you see that? I mean, I it's didn't. just, it's just. I mean, come on! This is, this is just wrong. <laughs> it's really wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Why don't we? We could maybe try to find another um, system. I'm this. just having a look to see if anybody's mentioned a uh, Nightbot alternative. Let me just check. What's going on here? Nope. I, I just Nobody said anything. I feel like I'm going to stand on one of these things. I'm just going to die. Try not to. Yeah, it really feels like this is the path to death. <laughs> but then everything feels like the path to death in here. But yeah, we need an alternative to Nightbot because it's it's clearly it's not playing fair, <laughs> and uh, that's not nice. Really not nice. Yeah, Emily Fearful mentions. I mean, this could be true uh, that Nightbot is only choosing people who have been active for a certain amount of time, which it does. But you'd still assume there'd be more people than this who are active. We could look into that. I, yeah, I also wonder if like the page itself has to be um, the the web page where Nightbot lives has to be somehow in the forefront. Because like while it's just sitting here, it's only showing fifty 
uh, people, but clearly there's more than 50 people. Mm. Yeah, so whatever. We'll figure it out, or you guys can help us figure it out. <laughs> We're trying to be nice. We're trying to give away prizes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doing our best. Uh, what's going on here? Okay. Luna S. Maybe they, did they ask something? Can we get an official response on how to join from the hosts? How to join what? Join the competition giveaway? If that's what you mean, you don't have to do anything. You just have to be here in the chat. Yeah, for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose maybe we could look at some of the Nightbot settings, but I don't know. It's really weird. It is. Really, really weird. Uh, so, uh, uh, Kefka, send your address, a phone number, and which of the prizes you want. That's all you have to send. Same thing applies to uh, uh, who, who else won? Skulls and Roses. Yeah. I feel like we ought to be through this by now. I feel like we've, we've sort of done the things that you could do here, and they're all numbered, you know, one, two, three, which is helpful. I'm glad they're numbered. I kind of like these kinds of rooms, I just wish it wasn't so deadly. Uh, I, I think that the idea of little puzzle rooms like this ah, is, is quite cool. Um, I just wish that... Ooh. Oh, come on. I just wish that the threat of death wasn't so sort of wasn't so final, you know? Sort of one of the things I liked about Lava as a um, as a gameplay sort of mechanic is that you could fall in Lava and take damage but not necessarily die. And you, you could then kind of work your way through a puzzle while still taking damage. Um, okay, so we got out of there. And um, yeah, I mean, these things, it's just like, it's instant death. And I think, I think instant death is not terribly fun uh, or if it is it should be used in a more kind of limited fashion oh my god we Ooh. actually got through blimey governor no oh, still Yay. more a slide no more slides <laughs> kill me now but yeah I think you know for the new game uh, there's a lot we've learned from playing this that we we're gonna try to avoid and I think instant death as a mechanism, <laughs> it, it's frustrating, you know? I don't mind taking damage, I don't mind learning a lesson, but not a, not a lesson that results in death. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, Tokzilla again has Googled, and uh, apparently there's something called Fussbot. Okay. So we can have a look at Fussbot. Let's have a look at Fussbot. We'll use Fussbot next week. Thank you. Thank you, Toxilla again. Yeah. Toxilla. Oh, sh come off. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> <sighs> what about quick time events? No. Yeah. Really? No. No. <laughs> no, not a, not a big fan of quick time events. I mean, I think that a lot of the, the stuff that we did here was was sort of in the right... The spirit of it was correct, but I think that the, the sort of combination of the mechanics and the threats, the, the sort of punishments along with them, um, we could have maybe done a little different. So, for instance, like, in these areas where you're, you're falling to your death... Why does it have to be death? Um, you know, a lot of games would have handled this by just teleporting you back to a safe place and so you wouldn't have had yeah you're you're failing by falling but you're not failing to death and the feeling kind of is i mean they're, they're kind of the same but you get you get a sort of punishment and then also i think we're not doing enough to sort of reinforce good behavior through uh illustrating like if you've made a mistake then how to how to maybe correct that mistake and we could be doing more of that as well. Uh, a lot of times, like I, I remember when we were first working on this, there was an idea that we might have the Cheshire Cat um, play through or show you a playthrough of a puzzle, um, 
you know, before you uh, you got to it. So it's sort of, hey, this is how you might do this. And, um, and of course, we didn't get that idea into the game. But I think something like that could be interesting, a sort of a guide, you know. <clears throat> yeah, quick time events don't seem popular in the chat. No, no. <laughs> Um, but I, I actually would like to see the Cheshire Cat playing a more active role in the game as a guide. Uh, that was something that we we wanted in the first game. It was something we wanted in the second game, and it was it's just a kind of like it's this resource intensive concept that unless we really push from it early on, um, I think that the team don't view it as the fun thing about the game because it's not sort of like a straight up game gameplay mechanic that the player. You know, it's it's a it's a hand holding thing, and so then the development team will think like, well, I don't need a hand holding thing, or I don't care about putting the hand holding in there right now because it's not doing anything to to improve the fun of the game for me. And that I think that it's a mistake. I think that there is something to be said for going on the journey with a companion. And uh, uh -oh, what are we doing here? Um, so anyway, I think that's something I'd like I'd like us to. Um, to try to figure out for the new game is is more of a sense of her traveling with the Cheshire Cat. Um, uh oh, this seems to be a stupid circle. I'm going in again. Hmm, not good. <laughs> so a couple of people in the chat mentioning uh, since we were just talking about gameplay mechanics, they mentioned what we were talking about last week about potential multiplayer. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we didn't talk about that this week. We should have. But there was, I mean, it's probably a good time to address a misconception that we saw some people mention. That multiplayer wouldn't be part of the main game. It would be absolutely 100% separate. There would be the main game, the story-driven, single player, you are Alice playing the game game, and then a multiplayer aspect, like an arena or something, they would absolutely not interfere with each other. Saw some people in the previous YouTube comments that didn't seem to quite get that. So just throwing that out there. Well, I mean, there's plenty of games out there that can be pointed to as examples of that being perfectly fine. I mean, look at the Call of Duty series, you know? Call of Duty has a single player component that's story driven. Uh, that, that are done you know, as missions, they're quite excellent and fun to play, and then you turn around and you play online uh, with your friends uh, in the also very excellent multiplayer side of things. So uh, I'm, I was a bit confused to see some of those comments where it's like, well, how dare you turn it into a... She, you know, it's not a multiplayer game at all, and it's like, well, it doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be both. Oh, look uh, at that, three blind We eyes. have a super chat. Mm -hmm. Nicola Bednaz that's about to scroll off. Thank you, Nicola. I've been upset with Alice since I begged my dad to buy me the first one when I was 10. I've just bought the design document on Mysterious. Is it the full design document that was used in development by the studio? Uh, no, it is not the full design document because the f there is no such thing as the full design document. There are uh, dozens, if not maybe a hundred or more, uh, design documents in a, in a sort of overall collection. Oh, come on, squishing me like that. Um, the thing you're buying on Mysterious is is a little funky. It's it's not the full, um, yeah, it's not a full design. It's not the full designs for the game. It is a sort of, I think it's like 75 pages or 55 pages. It's a sort of high level concept design document that has the general design but not all of the details not all of the areas and 100. all their details okay 100 pages um it's it's sort of like high level these are the characters these are the <laughs> weapons this is the general mechanics uh when it came to the the full-on design document uh you know you're talking about there being a document per area so like this this area we're running through right now had its own full document. And then, you know, we had dialogue documents, we had script documents for the cinematics. Um, there's a lot, a lot of documents. So no, what you're buying, if you buy that design document on Mysterious is sort of the high level, you know, this is the core of Madness Returns uh, document. That's it. And I signed it. 
Yeah. And there's probably some Lulu hairs on it. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Oh, and God. Ugh. <laughs> I hate that. Like, I didn't really screw up, but I just pressed into the side of a thing that's got, like, a kind of killing mechanic on it. You know, like a death field on it. And then it just decides, know. like, you need to die for that. Okay, what else we got here? Um, but, oh, to finish answering that question, if you're curious about all of the design documents, um, go to my blog, go to AmericanMcGee.com, and then there is a place where you can sign up for the mailing list, and then that unlocks a big blob of design documents that were released for Madness Returns as a function of Alice Otherlands. So a lot of the documents I'm talking about, like the the per level design documents, all those kind of things, those are there. So if you wanted to start to form a kind of complete picture of all the design, then maybe you would buy the design document from Mysterious, and then you go to my blog and you download all those other de design documents. And then, then you'd have a pretty good sense of like uh, the overall, all the design stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a super chat, Kendra Morrow. I'm so excited about this. Thank you so much, Kendra. We love you. We love the support. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Thank you. You could ask us something if you like. Or you can just say you're excited about this. It's okay. Uh, I'm not going to force you to ask a question. Force them to have a question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, while we're here at 10 past 11 in yep. the AM, I guess uh, we could do the little run through of what people could do to help out. We haven't done the, the list of four things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go to my blog and I fixed yep. up that page. I made the page more, uh, more, more listy. More of a list of how you can help with uh, getting the new game made. Uh, you'd have to go to my blog. Oops, that's not actually up right now. Derp. What drug can describe Alice? Is Hysteria going to be a thing? Yeah, I think Hysteria should come back. Uh, I liked Hysteria a lot. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. liked Hysteria. Um, as long as it doesn't become a multiplayer game only. I hate those kind of games. Hook Bat, whoever said it was going to be a what multiplayer did, what only? What did we just say? What did we just say? <laughs> we just said it's not going to be multiplayer only. I don't understand people sometimes. Okay, uh, so if you want to help us make the Alice 3 thing happen, yes, uh, there are a couple things that you can do. You go to my blog, AmericanMcGee.com, you will find this page. We've made it, laid it all out pretty simply. Um, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is that the development team for Asylum right now, it's me, it's Martin, it's Joey, uh, it's Lulu, I suppose. Um, and, and it's you. Um, this is it. So we're doing something a little strange because we're going through the whole pre-production process publicly, online, via YouTube, with you guys. And you are supporting the creation of the artwork and the design and you're having a say in this. You're having, you're having the ability to come and have all your feedback heard about what the game's going to be. Um, where normally this kind of process would go on behind closed doors and then it would all be sprung upon you and maybe you'd end up with a multiplayer only Alice um, because nobody listened to you screaming about not wanting that. So um, as a function of this though, because like I'm, I'm an independent game developer now. We're, we're just two guys living in Shanghai. Uh, I work from home. You know, Mysterious kind of helps pay my bills, helps pay uh, Martin's bills. You know, Out of the Woods we ran also helped pay the bills a little bit. But we have to keep these projects going to stay alive, to eat. And then when it comes to doing things like paying for the artwork that goes into these, um, that's coming out of my pocket. So then I turn to you guys and I say, please help out. Um, so that's that's kind of the background. So if you want to help out, then please go over to AmericanMcGee.com and then you can go through this list. Um, you can see here the four steps that help four us. Steps. Yeah. Number one step, this is actually going to go to uh, showing EA and any potential financiers or publishers that there is mass support for a new Alice game, and that is? The mailing list. Yeah, I'm trying to give you a chance to talk because I feel like I just, <laughs> blah, 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 I just talk too much. Sign up for the mailing list. The more people on the mailing list, the more we can show EA and future publishers or whatnot the support. Um, we only need real email addresses. If you're thinking you could help us out by doing a hundred fakes, it doesn't really help. 
Yeah, we need no. accurate numbers. And we've done the math on this because about you know the, the amount of money we, we want to raise is the you know it's into the millions of dollars um, U.S. in order to support this. Now we're probably going to get some sort of platform slash publishing support, so it means that we don't have to crowdfund all the development money, but we do need to crowdfund some of it. And the way that crowdfunding works, you know, we we know um, is all about getting the word out. We can't crowdfund if people don't know that the thing exists. So signing up for the mailing lists means that this time next year, around October 2018, you're going to start getting marketing related to, hey, we're crowdfunding Alice now. Um, that's why we need real email addresses as well. Yeah. We can't get in touch with you and say, hey, it's happening. Then you can't come and help us to make it happen. So uh, go and give us your real email address. Yeah. Don't forget that once you put your your email address into this, you're going to get a verification to email. Verify. You have to complete the verification process or otherwise you won't get uh, onto the list. I think we're up at about 22,000 now. 22,000 as of this morning. We yes. need much more. Yes, that's right. 10 times that. That is right. Uh, next, Number two. Yep. Is? Uh, like it says, follow on social media. Signing up uh, to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Clicking whatever is down here. Subscribe, subscribe and, and the, the bell. bell. Those things are important apparently. That is extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. And also as you can see, Twitter, go to the Asylum Facebook page, yeah. like it, follow it, all of that bump. Yep. The more users, the more likes, the more followers, the better it looks to EA. There you go. Uh, we have a super chat from Entrance Jew. Entrance Jew. I know Entrance Jew from Twitter, actually. I think I follow him and he follows me there. So hello, okay. uh, old friend Entrance Jew. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Uh, we're looking at Studios and Engines the other night, but if you happen to end up using Unity, then holler at your boy Entrance Jew. Huth. Huth. What's that mean? Huth. Huth. Have... Have the, have the help ham, the ham ham the ham. No, I don't know. Anyway, so um, yeah, <laughs> entrance to uh, appreciate the offer. We will keep that in mind. We are looking at developers and we are looking at engines. Uh, some of the people we're talking to are developers who also are publishers who would then bring their own money and their own engine. Or not their engine, but they'd bring their own team. Um, but it may still end up that we go with an independent team. So we are out talking to teams right now. Uh, so. I don't know, if you're serious and you have a team, then maybe send something like PM me on Twitter and let me know what, what you got going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next on three. the list, number three, you can support Alice Asylum pre-production via Patreon. Uh, and yeah, Patreon right now, we are at uh, something like $2,300. And as I said, the next goal on Patreon uh, is... Jumps up a bit is to get to $2,500, and when we reach that number, we're going to add another illustrator to the oh, team. Hope this helps. Oh, hope this helps. Huth. 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 Hmm. Never seen I thought it was heat the ham, or... Never seen huth before. I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Go to Patreon, sign up. If you sign up, you can even sign up for just like a dollar a month, and that gets you early access to things like the artwork that we showed today. So I, I post there almost at least once a week, sometimes more often than that, and these posts all contain uh, early access to the artwork, the design discussions, all that kind of stuff. And as you saw, if you post here, then I will we'll come on here and read your comments and, and respond directly to you. That sound means somebody just bought something on Mysterious, <laughs> which, which would actually be the next thing on the list after going to be a Patreon supporter is go to American McGee's official merchandise uh, shop online and you can buy stuff like the Inmate t-shirt or the Vorpal wallet, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Are we so done? Mailing list, sign up to social channels, become a patron if you can, and shop at Mysterious if you can. Yep. The first two, they're the free things. Hmm. Email address and social following. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Philippe Bedoya said, what happened to the wiki thing? That's a very good question. We still yes. want to work yeah. on the wiki thing. And in fact, Martin and I yesterday set up a Google Docs, uh, the presentation. So I, I've mentioned before, one of the things we're doing is we're going to put together a presentation. It's going to be like 10 or 15 pages that's going to go to EA. So the, the skeleton of that was created yesterday. We're going to start putting content into that. And once it looks like semi-presentable, then we're actually going to open that up so that you can see it, uh, not edit it, because then I'm sure you'd all put like pictures of your junk in there. But um, 
I don't know, that might work. You're obsessed with junk pictures, it seems. That's just the way the world is, man. I don't know. I, as far as I understand it, these days, mobile phones are used essentially for, like, two things. Ordering stuff online and sending pe- sending each other pictures of your junk. I mean, I I don't... Is, do you use your phone for something else? That's about Not junk it. sending, that's okay. for sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you... Where were we? Uh, <laughs> you threw me off... On the on the pictures. Of, oh, oh, because we we've, we've set up the Google yes uh, presentation the slides. Thing. So within some manner of like weeks, we will open that up so you can start to see the presentation as it takes form. That also means that like if you see that we sneak something in there like PSEA, this will be a multiplayer only game filled with lots <laughs> of free to play mechanics and DLC Loot that customers. Then you can be like, no, and <laughs> you, you can get angry. So. Anyway, before the thing goes out, you'll see it and you can comment on it uh, during the live streams. And yeah, we'll set up a wiki as well because I'd like us to start to collect together our ideas about design mechanics and locations and story and stuff like that into into one place. Because um, we still have this whole year-long process to go. Even once the presentation is done, we're then going to continue working on design and mechanics and art. So yeah. That's that's all going to get set up pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. People seem to be talking about junk a lot now. <laughs> yeah, well, this happens. Um, so yeah, that is the top four things you can do to help support the creation of the next Alice game. There you go. There you go. I feel uh, like I feel like a like a pimp. <laughs> whenever we go through all that stuff. Well, I mean, we're, we're at ten minutes to go. Yeah. The last thing on my list is Pirate Jam. Oh yeah, Pirate Jam. We talked about Pirate Jam. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, 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 ah, we're starting work on uh, a new website for Pirate Jam. Uh, there may be room on the boats for uh, two more developers. Uh, I know most of the slots are already filled up, but there may be room for two more developers. So if you are a developer, um, ideally a Unity developer, and you are interested in going out to Thailand and joining Pirate Jam, then go to pirate-jam.com and uh, you can you can submit your application there uh, and you may be able to join us. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're aiming, on, oh, say, on this very YouTube channel, there is a, there's a video list yep. of the Pirate Jam stuff. From last year. Early this year, or early, early, yeah, yeah, I should say that the previous Pirate Jam, which happened in March or April of twenty seventeen, yeah. So go and have a look at those videos, see how much fun it was, and the games that got made. I just all go a big circle, I don't know, maybe. All but one of them are up on the website for playing. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, pirate pirate jam dot com. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, we are looking for sponsors, so if you happen to work for some big evil megacorp that is interested <laughs> in sponsoring the uh, the next Pirate Jam, then uh, then let us know. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, spikes. I, I jumped. That would be good, wouldn't it, if somebody says, oh yeah, like my, my uncle works at Microsoft or something. It yeah. would be handy. <laughs> well, we don't need Microsoft. I, I've got a contact at Microsoft, and he wrote back. Did uh, he? Yeah, so we, we maybe we'll get some love from Microsoft. but. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be cool if we could give away the Surface, uh, like the Surface Pro or something, as one of the prizes for Pirate Jam. So people would appreciate that. Yeah, I think they would. Uh, but yeah, there is a playlist on my YouTube channel about last, er, about the last Pirate Jam. Um, so if you're curious to see a bunch of shirtless game developers in <laughs> Thailand making games on sailboats, then um, yeah, that's the place to. Or if you want to be one of those shirtless developers, yeah, you could. There's be. a couple of spaces left. There sure are. Yeah. No shirt required. <laughs> um, yeah, and I suppose while we've got people's attention, I could mention a couple of things uh, about Out of the Woods. If there's any of our high tier backers watching, uh, we emailed you recently asking how you would like your name to appear in the illustrated book. Got over half of them replied already, hmm. which is not bad going. Yeah. Uh, but we still need the rest of you. So uh, check your inboxes. There should be an email from Survey Monkey. It may also appear to be from Mysterious. Reply back. We want to put your name in the book as it should be. Hmm. 
And for anyone else who backed the Out of the Woods Kickstarter, uh, we still have about 290 people who haven't filled in their backer kit survey. Is it? 270. A lot, either way. So again, if that's you... Go fill in your survey. Go fill in your stuff. You know, we've got your money. Now we want to give you things. So please let us do that. Or maybe not. Maybe maybe stop <laughs> reminding them and they would just, you know, just we can keep, keep their, their money. money and not give them anything. <laughs> maybe. Mm, might be all right. Yeah, so uh, there you go. Two things. I mean, that happened the last time on the last couple of Kickstarters as well. People backed, uh, then they they never claimed their stuff. And I, and I have to say, like, as a, as a Kickstarter user, um, as a person who's backed a lot of Kickstarters, I actually... I'm guilty of that myself. I, I would I would back something and then I would kind of forget that I'd backed it. Um, and then what about the reminder emails? I would just ignore I mean, you them. You get a lot of emails. I get a ton of emails, so I, I would just kind of ignore the uh, the reminder emails. And I think that you know it really would only be like when the thing was ow oh, ouch. Uh, it would really be only when the thing was like super cool. That I I would like oh yeah I really want that you know sort of laser powered 3D printer thingy that I backed on Kickstarter and I would go looking to see um, you know I'd go looking for updates and then of course half the time like I'd go looking for an update and then it would be like I'd find out that the, the dudes had run off with the money um, and it it wasn't going to get made so yeah that's um, but we've also been on the other the other side of the story haven't we? For the, the Kickstarters we've run in the past, uh -huh. and then literally like a year and a half later, in the, some Facebook comment, somebody will pop up and said, I backed their Kickstarter and I never got my thing, these guys are scam artists. Yeah. And then you check and they just never filled in their survey. Well, the best of my favorite though is like, is that you check and then it turns out that they actually backed at a level where they didn't get physical rewards, <laughs> but then they still go online and call you a thief. And so you're like, uh, you know, you, you actually weren't in a category where you should have got something, but thank you for calling us thieves. That's, <laughs> that's really kind of you. But yeah. I mean, really, this, this Kickstarter around, out of the woods, there should be no excuse. We've done so many updates and reminders on Kickstarter and Facebook and the streams. Yeah. We've literally done all we can to let people know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. This part of the level gets rough. You missed a brick of a wall. Uh, you got to do all of your... Um... Yeah. Somebody says, I'm one of those people who have... Have and... Haven't. Is that, does that mean you have or haven't filled in your survey? Is there still time to upgrade my tier... Uh, I don't understand that question. You can, you can, you, you can, can add, add more stuff. stuff. I don't know if you can change your tier. You can't really change your tier though. But I mean, the best thing to do would be to actually go to your backer kit link, finish it, yeah, and see what you're allowed to change. Yeah, you're you're able to add all kinds of stuff in there. You so. have pretty much as much power as we do. But I want to know edit your why why haven't you done this? Why? Oh well, I don't understand. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? I've got some sort of um, uh, 3D printer that I ordered on Kickstarter recently that should be showing up soon. I'm very excited for it. And, uh, Did you yeah. see? Oh, oh, that's what we need to mention. So the, the, the high-level backers on Patreon are Ooh, also yeah. promised the... Where did it go? Where's this? Now here, the, this... Um, you, you hold that. I, I'll switch the camera. So... So we had shown these. Um, we had shown this. This is the chaos necklace that you see Alice wearing around her neck. And we promised this to be one of the things that you get for being a, a patron at the $50 or $100 level. Um, now these I did on the laser cutter in the other room. And they're, they're cut out of acrylic. And I did like a red one and a blue one. And I also did some other of the alchemy symbols because I was just kind of messing around with um, what can and cannot be cut and like what, what we could turn into various bits of, of jewelry. Um, but I wasn't sure if we were going to be sending patrons uh, something cut out of acrylic like this. And this is like, you know, we got real silver uh, chain and clasp and stuff like that. But I wasn't sure if we were going to go with this. Um, but I ended up, we decided that we, we found a manufacturer here in China that can do this in, uh, I think, a stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have these made in actual metal, in stainless steel, and then with a silver uh, necklace and clasp. And so those will be getting made. They're actually in, in manufacturing now. 
So those of you who backed at those levels and expect to get those necklaces... What is the levels? <coughs> 50 to get that? and 100. 50 and 100. 50 and 100. Um, but I'm also going to add them to the Mysterious Shop, but it'll be the same thing, because you could either get that by backing on Patreon, or I'll put them in the Mysterious Shop, but we're going to make the price something kind of high. Um, but they're pretty unique. I don't, I don't think that... Like, I went around trying to see if somebody had already pre-made... Um, something like this and I was not able to find a nice uh, chaos necklace in this style which is the same as what we're gonna do uh, for her necklace in the game so yeah mm. go check it out but anyway you guys should know yeah it's there on the um, on the artwork there but you guys <laughs> should know those are getting manufactured and then as soon as they're done they'll be they'll be sent out I mean if you want an acrylic one somebody grim Reaper <laughs> says I like the acrylic one. Uh, if you want one and you backed at that level, uh, let me know. And um, yeah, I mean, I could add the acrylic ones into the Mysterious Shop at a at a lesser price because I just cut them here at home and they're, they're quite easy to make. Um, so then maybe you guys in the comments below, you could say, yeah, I want the acrylic one and I'd like it in this color and I'd be willing to pay this, this price for it. And then we could put those in there as well. Mm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I think... Um, yeah, Grim Reapers. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. So maybe what we do is uh, the acrylic ones in the Mysterious Shop at a kind of reasonable price, and then we also have the stainless steel ones at a higher price. And of course, the stainless steel ones go to Patreon backers as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's half 11. It's half 11. Last roll of the dice. I thought we've already done four. We but did two. one guy didn't reply. But isn't that why we did two? Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do it. What let's are we giving? Oh, they're going to choose. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, what are we doing? Nightbot. Nightbot. Go, Nightbot. All right. Um, see, it's only showing 27 users. That seems wrong. Oh, well, here we go. 27, roll uh, it. Again, if you've won before, please don't win again. Or if you do win again, here we go. Okay, Retro Ace. Retro, Retro Ace. Ace doesn't sound familiar. Has never won before. There you go. So, Retro Ace, please send us a PM with your selection of prize. That could be either the the Omega, Omega necklace symbol or the skull bracelets. Skull bracelets. Yes, you won something, Retro Ace. So, yeah, yeah, make your selection and then PM us with your phone number and contact information and your selection. Those three things are very important. Um, and then we will send you your prize mm. in the mail for free. Imagine that. That's about it. Yeah, Out of the Woods, Done, Comments, Asylum, Pirate, Jam, Contests. Yep. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. If you have questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, be sure to check out my blog for ways that you can help support development on the new game. And I think that, um, yeah, we'll be back and next week with more art, more design, more me being terrible playing my own game. Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, let us know if this stream looked better. Yep. Some people said it did. It's it's a higher bit rate, so yeah. let us know. And again, thank you so much to all of you who are supporting on Patreon, who made the VPN box possible, who are making the artwork possible, all that. It's really wonderful. Really love you guys. Really appreciate all the support. Thank you so much. Thank see, you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.